Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a continuation of a series of episodes I've been doing called This Year in Perfume. And, you know, if you've been following my channel, you know that uh, this is not a high budget production. You're not going to get uh, opening intro music and, you know, the names of the fragrances across the bottom and all that stuff. But what you will get is uh, you will get a high information um, fragrance loving channel. This is about the juice. And so I just turned the um, video on and talk. And, um, you know, these kind of series that I've just kind of come up with along the way are ways that I get to talk about a lot of different fragrances. I get to mention fragrances to you guys. So hopefully you can put them on your list. And I think this is a fun way to, you know, keep track of kind of the timeline. Um, so this year in perfume, we're going in order. We're going now, uh, we did 1993 last year, so this episode is going to be 1994. And as we progress into the 90s, my dread uh, kind of continues to build because I keep thinking, oh my God, I'm going to hit a year that I have one fragrance uh, or two fragrances and they're not going to be good. And that's not the case. Uh, I'm looking at this list table of fragrances here. And some of these are absolutely amazing. We've got a couple of my favorites in here from different genres, different houses. So I hope you guys really appreciate this. Um, I hope you learned something from it. And uh, without further, further ado, let's get started. But before we do, uh, we're going to do scent of the day as is tradition. Uh, and today's scent of the day is a special one. And I'll tell you really quick before I show you the fragrance. It's a special one because this scent taught me to be patient. Um, you know, patience truly is a virtue in perfumery. Um, and when I first smelled this maybe six years ago, seven years ago maybe, I don't remember exactly how long it was, um, but when I first smelled this, I was put off. I didn't like it. Uh, I mean, I liked it because it was an amouage and I knew it was high quality, but it was so complex and it was so um, challenging that younger nosed Ramsey um, struggled with this, okay? But I did the smart thing and I bought a bottle uh, and I've been kind of wearing it over time and it's been a little bit since I've given it a wear. It's been maybe nine months or so. And I wore it today, and I'll tell you what, the complexity of this fragrance, the appreciation that I have now, I never could have had six, seven years ago. It's just impossible because here's the fragrance, and it's a, one of the most beautiful packagings of all time. This is a fragrance called Fate Man by Amouage. Look at the packaging. Absolutely stunning packaging. Uh, this is the Made in Oman bottle, um, and you can see the way Amouage, I mean, the packaging on this is you could literally spend an hour just going through all the fine little details on this packaging. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I usually don't care about packaging, but uh, Fate Man is... Um, it's really something. And so you open these, these amouage packages up like so. Like so. Like so. All right, here we go. And the bottle sits like this in the little um, coffin holder thing, if you will. The base. And look at this bottle. I mean, absolutely stunning bottle. Um, and this is the, like I said, made in Oman bottle. Uh, and Fate Man, the reason that it's so challenging uh, is because this is one of the heaviest dosed cumin fragrances you will ever smell. It is, it is the king of cumin. However, there's so much more going on because the main notes, uh, to my nose anyways, are cumin, immortel, or that's also known as everlasting flower, so those two notes right there are two challenging notes. Um, some people don't like cumin. Some people don't like immortel. In fact, the immortel flower is also known as the 
uh, curry plant in parts of the world because sometimes Immortel gives off that cumin. So you have cumin and you have Immortel, which, mix to get, which mixes to give this massive hit of cumin. But um, when you first smell this, probably the first five or ten wears even, you're going to be overloaded by the cumin. It is challenging. Um, it's sweaty. It is all the things people say about cumin, why they don't like wearing cumin fragrances. It's all of that and then some. But uh, underneath it all, there is one of the most beautiful fragrance compositions underneath it all. You have to search for it. Your nose has to, um, it has to, you know, get accustomed to the fragrance. And it has to be a little bit of a mature nose. This is not for starters. In fact, this is final boss, expert level fragrance, if you ask my opinion. This is, you know, what you go to when you really want something different and challenging. Um, and be underneath, you get some of the most beautiful uh, rock rose, cystus labdanum. Um, there's a note of uh, licorice. So think about that. Cumin, immortelle, licorice. But then there's also some freshness. There's ginger, there's saffron, there's rose, there's frankincense. It's an amouage, there's frankincense. Um, Copiba balsam, musk, sandalwood, cedarwood, and tonka. And there's a note of lavender. It's just the beauty of the fragrance really blossomed today for me, um, which it's done before, uh, but it, it did take a while. You can see I've made a pretty decent dent in the bottle, so it's not like, you know, I've only worn it once or twice. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what, if you are into challenging fragrances, if you like animalic fragrances like, you know, civet heavy fragrances or castorium heavy fragrances from the past this is almost like a modern take on an ultra challenging fragrance it is um something to behold now that being said i don't know about new formulations i think this is one of the first couple years that it came out um made in oman it's the older packaging with the name on the collar so i can't speak to the new versions but there you go so let's get into the list, and we're going to start with some bangers and end with some bangers. So the first one is a long discontinued fragrance, long, um, and it's highly sought after by uh, collectors and perfume enthusiasts, and it's a fragrance called DK Donna Karen Men. This is the only Donna Karen fragrance that I have in my collection. Uh, it looks like this. That's the way that it's basically written um, on the bottom of the bottle. It almost looks like a helmet from Thor or something, you know. Uh, or I don't know what it could be. It could be a gun. Uh, it could be it could be any all kind of things. Crazy bottle. Uh, it always reminded me of the Thor helmet for some reason. And um, basically, now this fragrance has a ton of notes. By the way, I should mention that. In fact. Let me just pull the, the note listing up so I can actually talk intelligently and know what I'm saying. Um, but in a nutshell, what you get, forget the notes, you get this leathery, oh, actually I should say, this is not really leather like, um, you know, like a Bellamy or something like that. No, this is suede. This is one of actually the best interpretations of suede that I have ever smelled. It's clearly suede and tobacco. But it's mixed with these spicy citrus notes that make it very 90s somehow, if that makes sense. Um, so you get this spicy, leathery fragrance that almost feels um, unisex before unisex was, was a popular buzzword, before CK1 and, you know, um, Hannah Moray came out um, with HM. This is uh, a masculine-leaning fragrance, but here, let me read you some of the notes from Fragrantica. Now, Fragrantica can be completely wrong sometimes, but here's what they say. Pineapple, apricot, peach, osmanthus, definitely osmanthus, uh, orange blossom, bergamot. Look at this floral heart. Ylang Ylang, orchid, heliotrope, carnation, jasmine, rose, and lily. Huge floral heart. And it does smell um, like there's a floral harp there, but not. don't think high-quality Guerlain florals. Think if, 
you know, a, think if maybe a designer house tried to put out a suede, um, floral, uh, spicy, you know, fragrance. And that's pretty much what you get. It's definitely a designer, but it's so unique. Um, this could easily be a niche fragrance today. Uh, I can see why people went crazy for it. It's not my favorite fragrance, but I'm glad to have it. Uh, I'm glad to be able to enjoy it uh, because it is so rare. I have no clue how much juice is left in this bottle. Actually, I think it's about right here. Um, you can almost see the juice, but you can't. I can see it from here. It's about right here. Uh, and so... I'll wear this and enjoy it on special occasions, but uh, really this is more of a, if you just want to chill out and, you know, spray a fragrance that's easy to wear, hanging out around the house, I, I'll, I'll reach for this sometimes. Um, I need to give it a wear. It's been a while since I've worn it. That's the downside of a big collection is, like, for example, Fate, I looked it up, I haven't worn this for nine months, and uh, Amouage is one of my favorite brands. It's one of the ones I make, purposely make time to wear. There are fragrances. Fate is amazing. Um, okay. Now we're going to go to one of my favorite tobacco fragrances. Um, and this is a fragrance that I think can be worn all year round. This is a, this is a fantastic signature scent. Uh, so actually there was tobacco in the first one. There's tobacco in the second one. And it's a fragrance from the house of Aramis and it's called Havana. Now, this is the newer packaging, okay? I don't have the vintage juice, but I hear that the newer uh, formulation is quite nice. So I just went for it because I heard that um, Estee Lauder sold the distribution rights to the Aramis fragrances to some other company, which worried me. So if you want these fragrances, I would say grab them while you can because God knows what's going to happen. They could be reformulated. Um, they could be discontinued, you know, all that stuff. But this is an amazing fragrance because it takes a lot of vintage. When I say vintage masculine notes, I mean like 80s masculine notes. So you get like this aldehydic green opening with tarragon and basil and caraway and stuff like that. And then you get to the heart, and it's it's basically a floral heart with this spicy tobacco. Spicy tobacco would be the best code word for this fragrance. Um, because you get this cinnamon, this tobacco, um, this balsam fir. There is some greenness here, too. And the green really feels like it kind of goes all through the fragrance because it's the basil and tarragon in the top. It's the balsam fir and tobacco in the base. Uh, or in the in the heart, but then the base, um, uh, the, you get this green patchouli in the base, so you get the three green stages, but it's clearly a tobacco fragrance, and then in the base you get this ambery oak bark and leather, and I'll tell you what, um, for a modern fragrance, this is fantastic. I mean, um, this could easily be a signature scent because it's so... Um, even though some people say, may say this is nothing special, it it forms such a unique um, concept. You know, if if you wear this every day as your signature signature scent, people will easily identify you with this because it's so it's so unique. There's not very many fragrances with this DNA even today. So 1994, um, depending on how old you are, either seems like it was yesterday or it seems like it was forever ago. But um, this is a classic to me. This is a tobacco fragrance that will always be in my collection. And then I'm going to go to a fragrance that um, some people may or may not know about. It is uh, a little bit under the radar, and but it's in the same DNA as my favorite gourmand fragrance, okay? Which my favorite gourmand is Amen. Um, this is a fragrance that came out two years before Amen, but smells almost I don't want to say identical, but it smells very, very close to Amen. Uh, this is a fragrance by the house of Animal, and it's called Animal Animal for Men. Now, this can be confusing because the original, let me just show you the original packaging. The original is Animal for Men. See it? This is a completely different fragrance. This is citruses and narrowly and stuff like that, and orange blossom, I think. This is a gourmand. Look at the color of the juice. Look at the difference. 
Um, you can see this one is much darker. Uh, so Animal Animal, two animals is the one that's most popular. This is the most popular from this brand. And it is the best fragrance from this brand. This is a fantastic fragrance. In fact, um, this is the modern fragrance. This is the modern version. And I would go so far as to say that this version is better than the modern Mugler version of Amen. Um, they have completely butchered that fragrance and they should be ashamed of themselves. Um, and this is basically pineapple, amber, galbanum, honey, big honey note. For a honey lover, this is heaven. Lavender, lily of the valley, musk, nutmeg, tobacco, sandalwood, rose, patchouli, ylang lang, cedar, lemon, and vanilla. Uh, and the fact that this came out two years before Amen. Amen gets all of the acclaim. It gets all of the talk, as it should. It's, it's a fantastic fragrance. It's one of my favorite designers of all time, but this does not get anywhere near enough talk. And the fact that it came out two years before um, is, is almost mind-blowing. This house, by the way, I don't think they've ever really sold out to a bigger brand. I think they just kind of um, make their fragrances. They, they make their 100,000 bottles a year, and, and that's that. And they sell 100,000 bottles the next year. They're not trying to constantly increase sales like Estee Lauder or whatever it may be. They're just content staying in their lane and doing their thing, and I appreciate that. And apparently this brand is hugely popular in South America. Huge! Uh, and South American um, fragrance market is gigantic. And like places like Brazil, fragrances are huge. In fact, some of the biggest fragrance channels on YouTube by subscribers are South American fragrance reviewers. I don't care about subscribers, but I'm just saying it's, it's huge back uh, in, in South America. But if you like a fragrance like um, Amen, I would highly recommend you check this out. Just go buy the modern version. You can get it on on uh, Fragrance X or Fragrance Net or eBay for twenty bucks, uh, and you will be shocked at the quality. Shocked! It is. It does not smell like a twenty dollar fragrance. Absolutely not. In the winter, this stuff is beautiful, um, and this is actually the reason why. Um, I only have a couple bottles of Amen. I have a uh, partial of a 50 ml and then I have a 100 ml backup and that's it. Next, we're going to go to one of the only fragrances I've ever bought that has turned on me. This, this fragrance is turned, but the bottle is still beautiful. This is back when the, um, when the Millicim Imperial bottles were gold before they went to the... Um, they used to be gold like this in the 90s and early 2000s, and then they switched to the clear bottles like you're used to seeing with Creed. Uh, here, I'll show you in just a second on the next one. And then um, they went back to the gold bottle now, but this is not a 50 or 100 ml bottle, gold bottle like the current formulations. This is a 75 ml bottle back when they used to do... Um, back when they used to do 75 and uh, 120 ml bottles. And so this isn't a fake. It is got the white it's got the white um, atomizer inside and all that good stuff. It's just it's it's turned. It's a citrus fragrance that has um, turned, which happens with citrus fragrances. That's that's a, that's one of the biggest risks of buying vintage citrus fragrances is that the citruses are the most volatile notes, they're the most um, likely to turn on you. And this is big citruses. This is bergamot, green mandarin, orange, and lemon with iris and this marine watery touch and amber musk and sandalwood. I wonder if this is a Pierre Bourdon. Um, I actually don't know for sure who it is. There's no perfumer listed on Parfumo. I wonder what Fragrantica says. Is this a Pierre Bourdon? Does anyone know? Um... Millicime Imperial. It Fragrantica does credit Pierre Bourdon for Millicime Imperial. How about that? Um, I couldn't remember if they did or not, um, but there you have it. So let me show you um, the second creed on this list, also from 1994, of course, or it wouldn't be on the list. 
This is a fragrance called Neroli Sauvage. Now, Neroli Sauvage is still being marketed. It's still being um it, it's still being made. This is a 2015 bottle, as you can see right there. And I'm going to show you an empty bottle because I use this entire thing. If you want a cheaper alternative to this, go watch my 1993 video where I talked about what I think is just as good, if not better, of a fragrance that came before. So Creed obviously took inspiration, uh, i.e. copied that fragrance and put it in a bottle that sells for 20 times the price. Uh, um, this, is, uh, this, this was a good fragrance for the summer. I can still smell the remnants on the atomizer. It, and you can see there's not a single drop left. I use this entire bottle, but I would just spray away in the summer. I mean, this is a, it was a light citrus fragrance that you could just really spray away. Um, and basically, Neroli Sauvage is Neroli with lemon, bergamot, bitter orange, and grapefruit with this orange blossom and ambergris. And so um, the Neroli and the orange blossom were the stars of the show. But, um, you know, if you do, if you smelled this first and you didn't smell the other fragrance I talked about on my other video, uh, you would think that is one of the best citrus fragrances you've ever smelled. But um, needless to say, there is a $20 alternative that you can get, which normally you won't hear me talk about an option that's that much cheaper with that kind of quality. You have to get the vintage juice. That's the thing. Go watch my old video, and I did a breakdown of it. But um, the Rolly Sauvage 1994. Uh, and then one of my favorite summer uh, aquatic, pro I would probably even say my favorite aquatic fragrance. Uh, this is Polo Sport. Now, this is the Cosmere version. If you get the modern version, Luxury Products LLC or whatever, you will be disappointed. This is the Cosmere version. And you can tell it's the Cosmere version because this is metal. Okay, this atomizer here is metal. Um, on the new versions, it is blue. So, actually, I'll tell you a quick story. What happened to me... I bought a bottle off of eBay from a seller that I will not use anymore. I won't say their name, but uh, they are banned from my list of, of uh, sellers on eBay that I will use because they sold me a bottle that actually came in a Cosmere box, but when I got it, it was Luxury Products LLC. It wasn't a Cosmere bottle, and it had the blue cap, so I sent it back, and... Um, I thought that was very, very shady uh, because if I wasn't as informed as I am, they easily uh, could have pulled the wool over my eyes. I, I could have, you know, accepted it and thought that I was getting a Cosmere bottle, but uh, I was smart enough to tell their mischievous ways and I sent it back and I'll never buy from them again. Um, but if you can find this Cosmere version for a good price, get it. It's amazing. It's one of the best summer fragrances in my opinion. Um, this is the smell of high school for me. I mean, this is what all my buddies wore. I didn't wear this, um, but all my buddies wore this. Um, and, um, it's basically aldehydes with, uh, citruses like bergamot, mandarin orange, and lemon. Then there's this beautiful narrowly note. Narrowly is not a cheap ingredient either, with lavender, mint, uh, and tarragon, and then cyclamen, geranium, ginger, jasmine, rose, rosewood, seagrass. You can see it's a complex fragrance for a polo. Um, it, it's, not, it's not some cheap little, um, you know, fragrance that they're throwing out. Amber, guyac wood, musk, sandalwood, and cedar. And so you can see that they have built a pretty impressive fragrance. I would highly suggest giving this a try. You have smelled this before, even if you don't know it. Um, once you smell it, it'll it'll bring back memories to you. Um, especially if you were alive in the 90s, that was a big that was a big hit. Now I'm going to show you one that's under the radar for 1994. This is a fragrance that I'm actually going to spray on a test strip because it's been a while since I've smelled it. I need to give it a full wear soon. But uh, this is a fragrance that came from the great 
Anuj from Enchante Perfumes. Thank you, my friend. Uh, you have been a huge help in my journey. Uh, this is a fragrance called If for Men by Sorella Fontana. Sorella Fontana. And it comes in this book. You can see it's a vintage because the limited ingredients listed there. Uh, and you open it like so. And you open this book. And you get the fragrance inside. Ta-da! If you want to pause and read that, you absolutely can. Be my guest. I don't know if you can get to it or not. But um, this fragrance is... Um, wow, I just noticed something. Um, Parfumo just added the notes. There were no notes to this fragrance um, previously. So that's an update. They just updated this fragrance. Last time I checked, there were no notes listed. It was a fragrance, but no notes. Um, so this is... Galbanum, myrtle, lavender, basil, cinnamon, pimento, myrrh, and sandalwood in the heart. Base is musk, vanilla, benzoin, and tonka bean. It's almost like a Italian or um, maybe like a fresher or Italian version of Jaipur is what it smells like to me. Uh, here, let's spray this, shall we? Let's see what we get. Okay. Oh, that's good. I need to wear this soon and see how this... Um, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting... Or being lied about, don't deal in lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can hear, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken, and stoop and build them up with worn out tools, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your your turn long after they are gone, and so bold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that is in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. I've never read that before. That is Rudyard Kipling uh, poem. So that was completely off the cuff. I hope not too many people turned off the video while I was doing that. But needless to say, um, I actually enjoyed it. So, uh, If for Men is a hidden gem. Uh, if it wasn't for, for news, I never would have had a chance to smell and wear this. Um, so... Absolutely beautiful, stunning. Uh, that's the reason why I love these vintage fragrances. I mean, they they just never they never um, fail to yeah, to impress. You know, even just a regular old random fragrance that Parfumo didn't even have the notes on. You get it, you try it, and you are most of the time pretty impressed with the quality. Um, the quality of the ingredients, the, you know, design, the, all that good stuff. It is, um, it's a joy to discover these, uh, these long lost vintages. If you like a fragrance like Jaipur, check this out. Okay, next. Um, 
I gotta wear that soon. Next, we are going to do a fragrance that I have talked about many a times on this channel. Uh, it hasn't been my scent of the day this spring or summer yet, but it will soon as well. This is a fragrance by the House of Halston, and it's called Catalyst for Men. This is the last true Halston fragrances before they sold their brand to EA. This is still Halston Fragrances, Inc., which is 1994, 1995. I don't think they lasted much longer. This is uh, Elias Hermendis and Harry Fremont combined to create this. This fragrance has a note listing that would make Roja Dove blush. This is basil, bergamot, tarragon, galbanum, jasmine, caraway, lavender, orange, mint, narcissus, or uh, rose, sage, tuberose, vodka. That's just the heart, uh, the top. And then it goes into the heart. And then it goes into the base. Uh, basically, you get this citrusy, fruity, because there is black currant, and um, there's a beautiful note of chamomile here, too. One of the best chamomile um, notes I've smelled since... Um, Fleur, Fleur du Mal by um, Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is, um, that was done by Francis Kirkjohn, by the way. And um, so you get this, you get this beautiful um, citrus, floral, fruity um, fragrance that also has underpinnings of fine French perfumery. There's labdanum, there's leather, there's benzoin, there's oak moss, there's real oak moss in this before they banned it, um, vetiver. There is everything in this fragrance, and but somehow, you know, it doesn't wear heavy. Like, Fate Man wears a little bit heavy. Um, Catalyst manages to have all of these amazing notes, but be light enough to be able to be worn in the warmer weather. It's it's a, this is a, a miracle of perfumery. And then you take the bottle. I mean, look at that. Absolutely stunning stuff. Um, okay, last two. The last two are two of my favorite fragrances. And one of them I discovered uh, because of my good friend, uh, Rich Mitch. It's his favorite celebrity celebrity fragrance of all time, and I totally see why. It's 1994. It is Luciano Pavarotti for men. Um, this is a splash bottle, as you can see. No sprayer. Uh, and th this, oh God. This is, I, I, so I heard a couple people say things like, yeah, it's a good fragrance, but, uh, you know, it's not the best ingredients. It smells cheap. I don't think that at all. I think that this smells absolutely perfect for what it is. Um, this was a designer that came out in the 90s. It's a celebrity fragrance. And they managed to create something absolutely stunning. The main notes in this are honey. Um, well, honey is absolutely the main note, but what's interesting about it is there's this freshness at the top. So honey is the gel that holds everything together. It's the honey. Uh, and then, but you also get this, um, almost like a myrrh feel. I think it's a Papanax or sweet myrrh. Uh, and then there is this freshness at the top. Rich Mitch says this smells like food. And I get what he's saying because there's this bergamot, narrowly, petit gras, Sicilian lemon, and uh, vervain. There's also a note of ivy in this. Believe it or not, there's a note of ivy. And that ivy actually brings a little bit of fresh outdoorness to an otherwise heavy fragrance. Because I, I always thought this fragrance would wear well in winter, right? This is like a... This is like a fall winter fragrance to me. But then I started to hear, you know, Rich talk about, no, this is uh, maybe a spring summer fragrance. I think it's just an anytime fragrance. Uh, the heart has dumbass rose, geranium, clove, iris, which iris is not a cheap ingredient, especially what smells like good iris in here. It doesn't smell cheap to me. Uh, patchouli, cedar, and then the base is amber, oak moss, honey, a papanax, um, uh, Russian leather. That is the twist that really got me. 
is there's this leather note. So while you are smelling something that smells very similar to a fragrance like um, if you've ever smelled Tom Ford's Moss Brex, which is discontinued, B-R-E-E-C-H-E-S, I think, Brex. Um, Moss Brex smells very close to Pavarotti, but that was a Tom Ford uh, a private blend that uh, was very expensive, long discontinued. I saw someone selling a bottle of Moss Brex for $1,000 on eBay. This you can still get for probably a uh, hundred bucks. Uh, if you can find a hundred ml, is this a hundred ml? What are you? Seventy-five ml. Sorry. If you can find seventy-five ml or one hundred and twenty-five ml, I think that's the other size. For a hundred, hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty, absolutely. I would say absolutely worth it. Um, don't spend 300, 400, 500 bucks on this, but still, it is, um, for someone like me, now if, you, if you're if you a honey lover, if you know my taste and you want to find something similar, uh, and you know what I love, Luciano Pavarotti, uh, it smells like the finer things in life. You know, like Pavarotti was a man who was known to indulge, let's say, in... Um, Maybe some of the forbidden fruits of life. Uh, he loved to drink. He uh, was a big womanizer. Uh, uh, and so it smells like someone who is partaking in the maybe finer things in life. The good wine, the good champagne, the nice tailored suits. The You know, that's what it feels like. And if you ever go watch uh, Pavarotti... Uh, sing, like there's videos of him on YouTube. I've never watched them before. They literally gave me chills. I mean, it is absolutely beautiful to watch him, um, to watch him sing. I'm not a big opera guy, but I know, I know beauty when I see it. And, uh, that was just gorgeous. Uh, go, go look up some old videos of Pavarotti, uh, singing his brains out. Okay, final one. And this is a banger. This is one of my favorite summer fragrances of all time. I would love a backup bottle. I'm scared to use it, actually, because um, this is the 1994 version, which is very expensive nowadays. It's the Made in Italia. Um, this is a fragrance called Dolce and Gabbana Pour Homme in the Euro Italia version, which looks like that. I'll show you on the bottle, too. Um, but long story short, I love this box. I usually don't care about boxes, but I've shown you two boxes today. One, Fate Man, and this one has this, like, velvet. Uh, what is that velvet feel? Um, and this, I had to tape the sticker down because these 1994 bottles are well known for their sticker to just come off. And I wanted my sticker to stay on. Um, but... Long story short, this is the only bottle of this that I have, and I'm terrified to uh, to use it. So this is a summer fragrance to me that incorporates some heavier notes. This is like, this is Italian perfumery in a nutshell to me, because you get this beautiful citrus opening, bergamot, mandarin orange, and then you get this spicy um lavender peppery thing in the heart so it's tarragon cardamom is the um heart notes uh is it you get cardamom and you get lavender lavender is big in this fragrance and then you get pepper which is also a little big to my nose sage but then the base the base is heavier notes so you get iris and you know i love iris but this is an iris fragrance like you've never smelled it's really not an iris fragrance. Iris is just used to um, make everything silkier, make everything smoother. And then you get this beautiful milky sandalwood with tobacco, um, another tobacco fragrance. But these tobacco fragrances I'm showing you today, they can be worn any time. I mean, these are fresh tobacco fragrances. The only fresher tobacco fragrance I can think of that I would recommend for summer 
is Creed's Tabarome Millicene. That's tobacco with ginger. You get this very green, fresh tobacco. You know, Creed has that fresh DNA. That's a tobacco fragrance you could wear in summer easily. Um, this is iris, sandalwood, tobacco, tonka, and cedar in the base. It's just so, for the spring and summer, it's so classy, so elegant, so, it's just perfect for warm weather. It's one of my favorite warm weather. Ah, get back here. Luckily, there's carpet down there. She's safe. Um, unscripted. Uh, you know what? I'm going to grab her just to prove that she's... She is safe. How's that for a final, a final entrance, just as I was about to say goodbye? Are you okay, baby? Uh, um, she says she's okay. There she is, Dolce & Gabbana, Pour Homme, the Euro Italia version. Um, I hope you guys enjoy these videos. They take a little bit of time for me to pull everything out, but I, I, I love making them for you. Um, let me know your thoughts if you wear some of these, if you have experience with some of these, if you uh, have thoughts on some of these. I hope you've got some of these that you don't own in your collection on your wish list. My heart is like, Ugh. she's okay, she's okay. Um, I hope you have some of these on your wish list. I love seeing your faces in the comments. I love interacting with you guys. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of doing these videos is... Um, you know, getting to talk with you guys in the comments and, and hear your thoughts and kind of questions that you may have. And um, I learn more from you than you do from me. Trust me, that is a proven fact. So, um, you know, do, do leave a comment below. I've said this before, a like and a subscription is appreciated, but um, you obviously don't have to if you don't feel like it. We are very close to 800 subscribers. We may actually be at 800 subscribers and... Um, I'm very grateful for that. You know, I remember when we just crossed 100 and I was thinking, my God, 100 subscribers watching me just ramble about fragrances, which I love to do. Uh, I could do this all day. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, it comes very natural to me for some reason. And so I hope you appreciate it. I know my videos are a little bit longer than the average, you know, uh, not as easy to digest. They're not in little bite-sized portions, but uh, needless to say, I hope I give you way more quality information than, than those other reviewers. So, cheers. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time with another video. Bye.